We need to come out strong and uh, yeah, be proud of what we are. If, if you have uh, adopted these values and, and you understand Bitcoin, you have a good understanding of the Bitcoin social layer and the economics of Bitcoin and the economics of, of fiat, then you are a resource in society and you shouldn't hide. If we didn't have Bitcoin, it, it could have become very ugly. Bitcoin is, is a perfect tool that can help us to, to reclaim a monetary freedom. Players Zero is the belief system and layer one is, is the monetary system. Everything else in, in society will develop in very different ways depending on what kind of monetary system and belief system you have. It seems like there's a really long history of inflation. Um, can you like maybe explain a little bit like what's the, what's the history there and in, in your book of about uh, fraud coin? Yeah, okay. So the book is named uh, Fraud Coin, 1,000 Years of Inflation as a Policy. And the 1,000 years is uh, the approximate time that we have had uh, uh, a monopoly in uh, money creation in Norway since uh, 1,050 after Christ. So uh, that was just uh, before the end of the Viking Age, actually. So my... Uh, my um, motivation for writing the book was to explain uh, what inflation is and what monetary policy is and how it has developed uh, to um, an average reader, not to the economists, um, not to the historians. Uh, and uh, my thesis was that it was easier for, for people to understand what it's all about if you include uh, yeah, real people and uh, real historic uh, events. Uh, so it, it makes it so much more accessible for, for, for the average reader, I think. In the beginning, it was supposed just to be a short article. Uh, and then uh, as, uh, as the time went by, it became a whole book. And um, the history of inflation as a policy or uh, by you know by with with politicians or rulers who who inflate the money supply that goes back to uh, at least um, the ancient athens uh, around 430 years before christ was born and uh, it has uh, developed gradually from uh, yeah inflating the money supply using silver and gold coins uh, to to using paper and then uh, digital money in our day and age. So I just tracked the events uh, there with uh, uh, trying to have a sort of a holistic approach there and uh, explain events uh, not only in uh, in Norway, of course, but uh, but in, in the rest of the world as well. And uh, yeah, try to explain how the interplay between the different countries, for instance, the country that has the reserve con currency, which uh, at the moment is United State, States, and, and the smaller countries. So I use Norway as an example there to, to, to show how the dynamics uh, play out over time uh, when you have a sort of a, a ruling country like uh, the United States and, uh, and uh, yeah, you can call it a client state like uh, Norway in, in terms of monetary policy and also in terms of, of course, uh, other, other areas in, in politics. Um, um, I think about, uh, about a third of the book or something like that is, uh, describes historical events uh, up to, yeah, mm, let's say the 19... Uh, 1970s when we left the, the last gold standard and then uh, yeah it's a it's an uh, a book that analyzes uh, things uh, in a very sort of accessible way as uh, as well so and draw some conclusions and uh, my my proposal towards the end of the book is that we must return to what I call monetary free freedom, which basically is the right to use the money you like best. And that is a sort of a foundational principle in civilization. That's the way you get um, all the other types of freedoms as well, in my opinion. And uh, that's the way you, you get a society that uh, where everybody can prosper and, and live a good life. 
So, so monetary freedom is a very important topic in the book. Yeah, and it's uh, it's it's what what I always say because some people are like, ah, I don't like the the altcoins. I like on this, but I'm like, let's just allow everything and let's let's let let's have the free market to decide what what money is best for the people. And I think in any free market, Bitcoin at least for now will will win, uh, and and mm -hmm. probably also like long time in the future. Um, the question I ask myself now is like, is this when we have such a long history of inflation on, and uh, elites and governments and whatever you want to call it, um, always try to exploit that that power. Is that ever stopping? Is like, <laughs> is there a chance that uh, that that will ever stop? Or do, are there historical events or historical epochs where we can exp uh, where we went from inflationary, like really a lot of inflation, to like back to deflationary? Uh, or like even like uh, other other states, is there like something we can compare uh, the mm -hmm. history of to what we have now or what we might have in the future? Yes, definitely. And I think it's important to notice that uh, monetary freedom, uh, which is the absence of monetary policy, has been sort of the guiding principle or the, or the principle in terms of how we deal with money throughout the most of uh, the civilization's uh, history. So we have had civilizations for at least 5,000 years. And although we, we know that there has been uh, many re regulations of, uh, of uh, which money you can use and attempts at uh, monopolizing uh, the use of money, we, we also know that... Um, the first uh, information uh, or the oldest information we have about uh, uh, using inflation as a policy by by multi uh, by expanding the money supply is it's just 2400 years uh, ago in in Athens as i said previously and uh, after that it, it has been sort of a, a gradual development where where uh, the inflation pol policy spread from country to country, probably because it fueled uh, several wars, uh, conflicts between states and uh, city states and nation states, and yeah. Uh, so, so inflation as a policy always leads to cons conflicts, and that's uh, most likely how how it spread uh, throughout um, the world. But then we know that, uh, for instance, in Norway, we managed to protect uh, a monetary freedom until 1050, and that is less than 1,000 years ago. And uh, uh, Denmark had it a few uh, years more, probably. Uh, and uh, I've been told now that uh, Sweden had it until, um, I think it was uh, the 12th or the 13th century. And also I had a podcast recording now with... Uh, some Icelandic Bitcoin friends, um, and they told me that they had the monetary freedom until in the 13th century. And we also uh, have quite strong indications uh, of uh, Ireland having monetary freedom until the beginning of the 17th century. Uh, and if we if we talk about countries that uh, sort of where where the people reclaimed the, their monetary freedom, then we can, for instance, mention the, the Netherlands in the period after the rebellion uh, against the Habsburgs uh, Empire in 1566. So they probably kept the principle of monetary freedom. Uh, during what was called the Dutch Golden Age, uh, which lasted uh, for about 150 years. Uh, it was probably a very, very important, um, uh, uh, part, a, a very important part of the explanation why they actually had a, a Golden Age in the Netherlands. And then we also know that um, uh, after the revolution in the United States, which um, uh, came to an end in 1783. We know that the uh, Americans uh, in the United States, they had uh, monetary freedom as a de facto principle, at least until 1857 with the uh, introduction of the Coinage Act, which uh, basically said that uh, from, 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 I don't know if it was from 1857 or if it came into 
effect later, but uh, after, uh, sometimes after um, 1857, um, uh, foreign coins uh, weren't uh, what we call legal tender anymore. So uh, you only had uh, American coins as legal tender, but it, it continued with, with, uh, with free use of bank currencies. Uh, so the banks, uh, they weren't um, uh, coordinated by a central bank in the United States uh, before 1914 when we got uh, the Federal Reserve. So you had sort of competing bank currencies uh, until uh, 1914. So that's uh, um, uh, that gives uh, at least uh, some degree of monetary freedom, although uh, the, the American silver coins were, uh, and probably gold coins as well, I guess, uh, had a sort of a privilege, uh, privilege status from uh, the Coinage Act of uh, 1857. And then we should also mention uh, Argentina, which uh, had their uh, uprising against the Spanish in 1816. And they, um, they uh, had monetary freedom in the period afterwards. So they used uh, currencies and coins from uh, other countries in, in addition to the fact that they also had free banking. So uh, the different uh, Argentinian banks, they issued their own currencies and competed uh, uh, with, the, with their own currencies. And uh, from what I understand, uh, they they kept this uh, as a uh, yeah as a de facto uh, what what could you say as a de facto principle at least until the beginning or well into actually the twentieth century. I don't know if it was in the nineteen twenties or nineteen ten or something like that. So so. And that's uh, that's very interesting because you know uh, Javier Milei, uh, who is the new president as of uh, 2023, he has been talking about uh, going back to monetary freedom, first uh, via dollarization of, of the economy in Argentina, and uh, and I think he understands this history very well because he. He talks a lot uh, also about uh, the extreme growth levels they, they had in Argentina, in the, especially in the 19th uh, century. So, so although we might say that it's, uh, it's more than 100 years ago uh, since we have uh, had any major countries with uh, monetary freedom, it's quite recent. It's uh, just four, four generations uh, back, in, back in history. So... Um, and what 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 can we learn from from those periods uh, where monetary freedom wa- was um, reintroduced in society? Well, we know that the, the growth in the United States and Argentina it was phenomenal, and um, although many people uh argue many people say that this was because of the gold standard the gold standard was introduced in 1870s uh, many people talk about uh, uh, the reason why we had so much uh, prosperity mm. in the 19th century and um, yeah the econo- economic development was very fast uh, in especially in the united states and they often refer to the gold standard as an explanation. But uh, the way I see it, um, the combination of uh, Argentina and the United States having monetary freedom for, for most of the time until yeah, gradually less and less, of course, in the to, uh, until the beginning of the 20th century, I think that's a far better explanation, actually. Um, and um, what we also... What I also perhaps mentioned was that this is just uh, four generations back, so it's quite recent, and therefore it's it's also easier for me, I, I think, to communicate that uh, uh, we are not going to to create something new uh, if we if we if we manage to turn back the clock and uh, just reintroduce uh, monetary freedom. That's something which we have had before. It should be possible to implement it again, uh, and we should uh, get uh, the same same type of uh, 
uh, of um, social and economic gains and advantages from that today uh, as, as we had uh, a little bit more than 100 years ago. So, um, and that's, that's a very important lesson, which uh, isn't being taught, uh, I think, in uh, economics. It's, it's not being taught in, in public schools, of course. It's, um, and I, I think it's uh, too little focus on that also in the uh, Austrian economics tradition. Uh, it, it's too much uh, talk about uh, sound money, uh, gold uh, standard and the uh, that it would have been good to return to the gold standard. No, I think it definitely is much better that we just uh, uh, reintroduce monetary freedom. And uh, that should be our objective. That should be our focal point in these discussions. And from from my perspective, um, Bitcoin is, is the perfect tool uh, that can help us to, to reclaim monetary freedom. Yeah, and... That's something that I'm also really passionate about because um, people, especially outside of the Bitcoin world, keep asking me, yeah, but what if Bitcoin fails? And I'm like, nothing really changes. Of course, like uh, it's it's a big thing if Bitcoin really fails. And I, I put it at a really, really low probability uh, now that Bitcoin actually fails. But the things that I fight for and I talk about are Bitcoin related because Bitcoin uh incorporates and or uh, presents those things but the free market the the that we have this uh, selection of what we use as money uh, uh and uh, austrian economics also with the sound money and, and all this stuff these are all fine principles outside of bitcoin and those are the things the principles that we that we should teach and bitcoin just happens to be the best vehicle for now for that and i think it will be the best vehicle for a very long time um but even if it fails the principles the idea of bitcoin will never fail like the idea of bitcoin will always be there uh and uh yeah i'm i'm i'm, I'm really positive uh, when when the when, when we look at the future and what what could happen um you also talked about the monetary freedom and it's like the base of all the other freedoms how do you see the 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 world on like monetary freedom when we see we have a sound money standard or we have at least a standard where people can freely choose which money as we have this monetary freedom as a base what does this impact how does this impact society um you probably have a lot of uh, also historical examples of of that how this how this looks how innovation and then companies drive that but also like society changes on, on top of that i often uh, ask on my podcast um how did your life change while you discovered bitcoin and it's interesting mm -hmm. what 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 comes up uh so how does how do you think uh society can change on on a monetary freedom standard okay when when i've been working and thinking about these uh ideas and learning from history I've come to the conclusion that it's useful to to develop a sort of an analytical framework for for for, for at least to assist my thinking and uh, my current analyt analytical framework in this realms is is that uh, you have a sort of a layer zero which is uh, the people's belief system broadly speaking uh, it's, which of course uh, includes both uh, ethics and religious uh, aspects and but but first of all what kind of idea do we have uh, about us as uh, human beings uh, and um, is it um, is, is society overcrowded crowded by people who, who think like slaves or is, do we mainly have people who are freedom oriented and, and think like free free men and women and uh, uh, so if you if you have a society with people who, who have a slave type of mentality then you almost automatically will get a situation where where someone monopolizes the money production and, and t tells uh, the rest of the population that you have to use my money, uh, for instance, when you pay taxes and, and then uh, all other types of money are illegal in, the, in this country. On the other hand, if you, if you have a, 
a society with uh, freedom oriented uh, people uh, you, you need sort of a sufficient number a high number of, of freedom oriented people then you will be able to to either protect uh, monetary freedom if you, if you already have it or you can reclaim it just like they did uh, after the with the revolutions in Argentina and uh, the Netherlands and in the United States and then the question is uh, <laughs> what what do you get on top of the on, on, on sort of of the monetary system, which becomes a sort of a, a layer one in society? So we have layer zero is the belief system, and layer one is is the monetary system, and then everything else in in society will develop in very different ways depending on what kind of monetary system and belief system you have. So in generally speaking, uh, monetary freedom will tend to decentralize everything uh, from economic power to, to political power and, uh, and, uh, the op- and also facilitate uh, economic growth, uh, collaboration, cooperation on all sort of levels uh, in society. And you get prosperity, uh, economic growth, uh, cultural growth, you, you sort of uh, human flourishing, I would say. While uh, if you if you have a monetary monopoly where where someone can inflate and deflate uh, the currency at will, then uh, you will gradually or or very quickly actually uh, destroy civilization, and uh, that's what we have seen many examples of, uh, of course. That, uh, for instance, the Roman Empire, it it grew and grew and grew and until it uh, imploded. And uh, so this is some, not something uh, new. So I think um, you, you get it, it's it's almost impossible to 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 grasp how different uh, those uh, two types of societies are. One with the uh, monopoly and money production and one with. Uh, um, monetary freedom that are so different that uh, it's it's almost impossible for us to 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 understand uh, how different society will be if we if we return to monetary freedom and uh, I think uh, the best um, the best uh, sort of um, uh, uh, way to to investigate this now is is to try to have a look at uh, the people who have uh, transformed their life uh, lives from from living in a total uh, fiat standard a private economy fiat standard and and made the um, made a transition to a bitcoin standard where they don't have any debt anymore they earn bitcoin they spend bitcoin they, um, and, and, and just look at how how they interact with the world and how those people attract uh, other good people and resourceful resourceful people. They become like almost like magnets on other um, kind and and uh, talented people. And uh, you see it with the with the Bitcoin economy. You, you know. Now that the Bitcoin price has uh, increased so much in just uh, the 14 years since uh, it started having to have a price, some yeah, in May 2010, it's 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 extreme. It's impossible for us to understand the speed of this development. So so Bitcoin attracts so much of the talent and so much of of, of the capital so fast. And, um, and that's uh, that's what you, you would see, expect to see also, for instance, if you had a country which uh, just implemented suddenly overnight uh, uh, monetary freedom and abolished its, uh, its uh, monetary policy. So um, uh, if, if, you, if you try to investigate and, and, and take a look at how, how do... Uh, how do the bitcoiners perform or how how does bitcoin change people's lives uh, i think that's perhaps a a, a good uh, guide into uh, for us into understand uh, what the transition will will be for a whole society um yeah uh, that's my best answer for that uh, on that question i guess
Mm. Yeah, and I've seen it. I, if, if people watch this podcast regularly, I, I ask that question a lot. Uh, and, and it's, it's so fascinating to see those, those answers and to see what, what Bitcoin made with their lives. And I often compare it to, uh, running in mud and running on a solid street. Like if you run in mud, you, yes, you come get forward, depending on what mud, uh, if you're, there's like just a little bit of wet sand, uh, maybe on the beach or something like that. It's, it's, it's difficult to run, but you can come forward, um, but something is dragging you down. But what happens all of a sudden, if you have a solid street, you can like, uh, make those cartwheels. You can like run in a, a circle. You can also take uh, a break every once in a while because running got easier and you can get further ahead. Uh, it's, it's, it's an maybe too simple of an explanation. Uh, but I think it makes when, when the foundation of money is fixed and when the foundation of, of, life kind of is fixed uh hmm. a lot of other things get easier and this is where something is really cool you still have to run like even if you adopt the bitcoin standard if you stop running if you st stop doing anything it's also not good like it, it, uh, just because you adopt the bitcoin standard your life does not magically get better but hmm. with adopting the proof of work kind of mindset and with with the low time preference mindset and the sound money mindset and this freedom uh, aspect mindset then those things start kicking in and i uh, funny that you said it in the beginning that your book started as an article because i'm trying to write an article on on exactly that phenomenon and, and trying to like get examples from the podcast and things on that like also gets bigger let's see i don't know if i make a book a book out of it but uh i'm, I'm trying to uh, write an article on, on this and, and like summarize some key learnings from from the podcast um what i also ask myself this transition like when i go out of my bitcoin bubble and and go out in in like the, the family areas in my uh in in my other towns and and yeah my old work colleagues and stuff like that where there's this fiat mindset in, ingrained. We need inflation to grow the economy and all, all this stuff. Um, they're really, really, really deeply in this fiat mindset. And it's, I think it's kind of hard to, for them to get over that. Um, and then I'm mm. like, especially those who, who are not having the time to investigate maybe the, 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 the monetary system too much. And they have like one job and they maybe need a second job at some point. Um, they don't have the time to sit back and see like, oh, what's the monetary system? And then we are just transitioning where a smaller group of people that got to know about Bitcoin, got to know about some money system, uh, benefit a lot uh, over a large group of people that are running in that feared uh, wheel and trying to get ahead, but they're not. Um, can this transition be, be peaceful or is this this transitioning time? Um, getting failing too many people that we kind of end up in a in a mass economic crisis and we have to rebuild stuff like do you do, do you have an i mean it's an impossible uh thing to predict this mm. thing but do you have like kind of a, a plan or s scenarios what can happen in in those kind of transition periods mm. predictions are always very challenging of course but uh i i often ask the question what do you, do you think it would be like if we didn't have uh, bitcoin as an alternative uh, as an as a path forward uh, i think many people agree that uh, the fiat system in most part of the world has uh, soon come to an end and uh, the alternative in the past um, in, there weren't many alternatives in the in the past when things like this ha happened uh, it it was sort of uh, it ended very badly in wars and uh, and uh, uh, and the hyperinflation you know and then it was uh, just rebooted started all over again with a new currency system with new promises uh, from the rulers uh, that they would not um, inflate the money supply etc but uh, then it just yeah, it, you you got a, a second, a new round of the same stuff, basically. So um, I think uh, uh, if we didn't have Bitcoin, it would have it could have become very ugly. But Bitcoin, the way I perceive it, is that it's it almost creates a sort of a bridge 
and uh, that bridge wasn't there before. Now people can walk over that bridge from uh, a quite um, um, a bleak uh, uh, situation, where, uh, sort of uh, a situation where there weren't weren't many alternatives, many good options at all. Uh, and if you if you just are willing to to start walking over that bridge, you learn uh, uh, as you walk, and and you get opportunities and meet people while you walk, uh, and uh, you develop your 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 skills and your understanding, and uh, uh, it it sort of uh, it's almost like a life uh, raft, uh, so to speak. So that's. Uh, a very important alternative to have compared to not having any good uh, options uh, in uh, in a, a situation where, where the fiat system uh, sort of comes towards and uh, collapse. So I, I think it's it's important to have that perspective. And and then the question is, um, how will it um, uh, how will it be this time? Will will sort of uh, will will Bitcoin affect the overall transition there uh, for the better for for the whole of society, or will it just be uh, something which uh, uh, creates uh, opportunities for a softer landing for those people who discover uh, Bitcoin uh, and and start to make use of it? Um, uh, start walking that bridge i'm not sure it's a, it's a, it, this has never happened before you know so it's very difficult to 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 predict uh, what will happen the, to society at large uh, but what i feel is that um bitcoin uh, it attacks the incentive structures in society in a really impressive way and the incentives they guide our actions uh, all the time, either consciously or subconsciously, and uh, and uh, we should also keep in mind that what that's something that I write about in uh, the second book I have written, which is called Unbar. That that is the fact that uh, human beings we are experts in copying others' behavior. So we copy other people's behavior, whether it's good behavior or bad behavior, depending on um, the, very much depending on the on the incentive structure in society, what kind of situation we find ourselves in. So if if it if I benefit, if I survive due to copying your bad behavior, Robin, then I will do that. And, and some people will also do it because they not just to survive, but because they profit in the short term, they will do that. Um, but w- what sort of opens up now is a, is a is a is a whole new economy uh, with, within the Bitcoin community with the totally different incentive structures compared to the to, to the world uh, outside. And uh, I think that will uh, sort of um, uh, become so powerful that uh, it uh, it becomes uh, almost too obvious for for the outsiders that this is something good. This is a force for good. This is a positive community. We we see a lot of developments with within the Bitcoin um, community and Bitcoin economy. We also want to do this. We want to be part of this, uh, whether it's. Uh, um, becoming owner, uh, investing in Bitcoin, or if it's um, just uh, connecting to 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 that uh, social sphere uh, of, of, of society uh, of, of life, I think um, very many things can happen there uh, as as we progress, and um, this will affect uh, also people who who have been in positions uh, you know where they have been used to it was completely natural for them to be political leaders and use uh, power uh, to, and and to com- command society command other people to do as they wanted to do because they had some grand ideas you know for society and how it develops 
uh, at one one point many of those people as well will be affected by uh, bitcoin's incentive uh, structure and, and and they will become aware of what's what's going on within the bitcoin community so in the end uh, everybody will be affected by this and uh, so uh, the psychological and so- sociological um, aspects of this uh, shouldn't be underestimated uh, i think it's not only about uh, how the economy uh, develops uh, i'm <laughs> i'm uh, i'm positive i'm optimistic by by nature of course uh, that's that's my personal personality but i think you really need to understand this 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 has never happened before and uh, i think it's important that we put aside uh, many of those most dramatic uh, catastrophic uh, scenarios uh, so to speak and and rather uh, have a look at the opportunities what can we do with this uh, fantastic tool that we have now uh, called bitcoin uh, as a monetary technology and and how can we uh, take advantage of the social layer of bitcoin which, which is even more in in my view even much more impressive uh, than the technology itself so if we if we make good use of this we can create our own uh, future instead of uh, fearing for a catastrophe and uh, waiting it out and see what happens and, and hope that bitcoin will uh, save me and my family and perhaps my local community or something like that you know so be proactive, be, be proud of being a Bitcoiner, uh, connect with the normies and uh, um, yeah, show them, um, show them uh, some, a different set, set of values and uh, uh, just uh, yeah, go move, move forward and, and be proud of what, what, we, uh, what we have learned and uh, what we have become. That's, that's my idea. If you are listening to this podcast, you might be wondering what is actually the setup look like of Robin or how can I improve my Bitcoin setup? And there's two things. You have to buy Bitcoin from the right source and you have to store Bitcoin the right way. Let's focus on the first thing how to buy bitcoin it's simple have a bitcoin only exchange don't deal with the shitcoin exchanges don't deal with an exchange that has an own token or something like that be on a bitcoin only exchange i use 21 bitcoin 21 bitcoin is for me the best partner for that and now where do you store bitcoin bitcoin should be stored on a hardware wallet on a self custody solution where you yourself hold your keys and it should be a cold wallet so that's my simple solutions. That's a bit box. You just put your Bitcoin on there, back up your seed phrase, and you are better than 95% of all Bitcoin hodlers. If you have more than a thousand euros in Bitcoin, it's an absolutely must have. One last thing before we get back to the video. I'm really passionate about meeting other Bitcoiners. And there's an amazing opportunity in middle of Europe in June, the Bitcoin Prague conference. It's the best and biggest Bitcoin only conference in whole of Europe. For all Americans, please visit Europe and visit this place in June. For all Europe's, it's a must go anyways. You are so close to the Bitcoin Prague conference, you basically have to come. I will do interviews there and I would love to meet you all there. Use code ROBIN for all my sponsors to get discounts and use the links down in the description. I hope and I always advocate for like a slow fall of, of the fiat system because if it's falling too fast, it's like the Titanic sinking too fast that we don't have time that the people come to their life rafts, as, as you said, uh, and on Bitcoin with like uh, this bridge to, to a free market, free monetary system. Um, but what did you mean by using the social layer of, of Bitcoin? Like what's, what, what do you mean by that? Okay, for instance, uh, um... You know, I, I haven't been uh, in the Bitcoin community for more than a couple of years now, so I I don't know it inside out and I don't have the sort of historical understanding of, of how it has developed. But uh, when I started to, to try to learn about Bitcoin, I, uh, I felt that the community was a little bit closed uh, and that, uh, for instance, um, some of the first impressions I, I got was that uh, 
some Bitcoiners wanted it to be close, uh, probably because they felt uh, safer there. They had found their community and they talked a lot about the need to study for thousands of hours before you can understand Bitcoin. That sort of sent a message to no coiners, uh, to the normies, that this is so complex. This is um, this isn't uh, very easy at all. And you are an outsider. We are the insiders who have discovered this wonderful, wonderful thing. So those signals uh, I know took notice of, uh, and uh, and uh, once I'm on the inside, I see that. Uh, uh, now, after so many Bitcoiners have embraced Fraudcoin and uh, opened uh, up for yeah, onboarding me as well, uh, then I, I, I realized that uh, quite uh, a lot of Bitcoiners have given up on the normies. Um, they think it's difficult to do the orange pilling. They um, find it hard to have uh, uh, to have discussions, talk with. Uh, people who, are, who aren't Bitcoiners because the mindset is so, so different, uh, etc. And then uh, they isolate themselves a little bit uh, in, in, within the community. And when you combine that with with sort of uh, a fear also, uh, quite a few Bitcoiners I've come across, they have a sort of a, uh, they are proud, but they, they don't want to be open about being Bitcoiners and not not being openly proud about being Bitcoiners because uh, they feel that uh, the rest of society, uh, they think Bitcoiners are uh, something uh, strange, uh, very strange fellows, you know, uh, they, they're pushing uh, a pyramid scheme, a Ponzi scheme on the, on the rest of the people. That's why they are trying to orange pill us, you know. That's uh, that's the, that's the the idea that quite a lot of uh, Bitcoiners have about the normies, so, so they don't, yeah, they distance themselves from them, and uh, they, um, uh, they um, not not all of them, of course, but quite 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 a lot. And I, I would I would like to have a, I would like to see uh, some progress in this domain, then that people uh, open up about being Bitcoiners and and talk about why it's so positive to to be in the Bitcoin community, why they are proud of being Bitcoiners, uh, uh, what kind of values they have, what kind of interests they have, what it has done with their lives, etc., and and talk less about. Uh, uh, the economic uh, and political aspects of it, uh, more about the social aspects of it. I think that would be good, but uh, then then you you must uh, have a change in men- mentality in the Bitcoin community there, where it's it's okay, it's positive if we go out and uh, are are um, uh, uh, actively uh, showing the rest of the society that we are proud of being Bitcoiners. That's that's one big reason why I decided to go out with my full name, full disclosure, like on every social media. I'm like, okay, I'm Bitcoin mm. guy. <laughs> I, mm. in, in in my my real life, uh, I'm actually way more defensive. Like when someone, when I I get the feeling that someone is um, inclined to understand Bitcoin or they they want to understand Bitcoin, I'm really like just showing them everything, and I have prepares a YouTube playlist. I have prepared like a book list, what they can get into, like whatever they, they want to have, like uh, my own small uh, orange billing set uh, that I give people that I, by the way, I encourage everybody to have it, like have just a notes <laughs> a note page on the phone where you can just uh, quickly copy that and, um, and send them per Excellent. WhatsApp, something like that. That that's, that's a really nice game changer because you cannot explain them everything they have to, discover them themselves. Um, Mm. But from the early days where I was really heavily orange pilling, like I was really going, hey, did you hear about Bitcoin? And I felt a little (laughs) bit like a a religious guy who just wants to tell Mm. everybody he he found God. (laughs) Um, The missionary man. (laughs) Exactly. And from that, I completely Mm. went away. And I'm, I'm having this approach to be as happy and successful and um, and present in the world as possible and being just a role model in general in life uh, with, with everything mm. that I can do. And then 
also mentioned that I'm doing Bitcoin and then that I call myself a Bitcoiner. And I think that's mm. how I can associate in my small circle. Oh, he's doing good in life. He's a Bitcoiner. Like that's that's how mm. I try to do it. Uh, and in just like when people ask, uh, like these days, inflation comes out a lot. Uh, economic comes out quite a lot on on discussions on on tables. And I just like try to like, oh, did you thought about Bitcoin? Is is did ever mm. did you ever occur about like to think about Bitcoin? I, I I don't try to push it. I just like try to bring it in conversations and and. Uh, people that are interested then come usually afterwards, usually when they're not 20 mm. other people involved to me, hey, what's that Bitcoin thing? Are you involved in that? And then then I show them. But yeah, it's, it's fascinating. How do Orange build? A, there should be books about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I guess yeah. there are many books about that as well. But uh, yeah, no, I think uh, everybody f- needs to find their own way into Bitcoin. But I think uh, at least it's... Uh, easier easier for 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 people to discover it if uh, bitcoiners are openly proud about uh, what they are and what they represent and their values and uh, yeah and uh, their journey journey and how it has uh, changed their, their lives instead of uh, sort of not not wanting to talk about it too much because uh, they are afraid about what they think of of, uh, of you as a bitcoin uh, since you admit that you are a bitcoiner so we we need to come out strong and uh, yeah be proud of what we are. I think uh, yeah I, I that's a some, name for quite many people. <laughs> yeah, I, I I talk to some Bitcoiners that are anonymous, and uh, I, I mean, first of all, I always like completely respect. Like I already have like five six yes. episodes on the podcast that are completely anonymous. Uh, then they show don't show the name they don't don't show anything i had one discussion with a fellow who was anonymous and he said to me i think he even said it uh, live on the podcast that he doesn't even tell his son that he is in bitcoin like not even his family knows that he is in bitcoin he just wants to be completely anonymous and put the bitcoin side of things away from all the rest of his life because he fears that there might be some attacks on Bitcoin. He's fearful of uh, this transitioning phase of when the old system is crashing down and the new system is is, is coming alive, that there is some collateral damage in between with uh, outspoken yeah. Bitcoiners. And I thought about that. And my, my short conclusion is, even if this happens, I don't want to hide. Uh, but other people mm. might, might feel differently. And it's I respect everyone's decision to be anonymous, uh, and and it's it's totally fine for me. Uh, but if if you want to be outspoken, you definitely should be. It has also advantages to your personal life mm. uh, if you associate yourself with great technology that appreciates that much in purchasing power. What what are your thoughts mm. on that? Uh, of course, uh, it's uh, impossible for me to put myself in every other's uh, situation and. Uh, of course, is if you're if you if you if it's a life-threatening uh, situation for you, if you admit that you are a Bitcoiner, or if you if it's very likely that you will um, attract uh, gangsters, attackers, you know, people can, who can harm you and your family. If 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 you are in such a situation, then yeah, of course, um, I respect that decision. But I, I suspect that uh, quite many people who, who, who stay sil- silent about their um, ab- about themselves being Bitcoiners, uh, they aren't uh, in, in such a situation. They, sh- they just want to be on the safe side. Um, and I have uh, some difficulties uh, with that. If, if they aren't sort of uh, someone who, who has a position, for instance, in, in, the, in the Bitcoin sphere where it's very important for them to be uh, anonymous uh, out of, uh, for instance, uh, uh, secur- b- b- due to security concerns. For, for instance, I understand perhaps that some core developers, they don't want to, to risk... Uh, disclosing who they uh, their identity because that's also 
could be some kind of risk for Bitcoin. That might be a situation. But for, for most of the people, I think it's uh, it's very important that they come out and uh, are open about it. Um, the more, the better. And of course, it's uh, it's so much easier for others to come out and be open about it uh, when when many when many people uh, admit that I have been silent about this for for years. But now I think it's about time that I uh, am open about being a Bitcoiner, and I think that others should be should do the same. That could be very very possible positive for the for the future development of um, of uh, Bitcoin adoption. I'm quite convinced of uh, of that actually. Yeah, it's if if you represent something positive, if you are in a community which is uh, good for 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 society and good for how society develops, uh, I think you need to 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 be open about it uh, if you want to uh, if you want to uh, sort of spark interest, uh, yeah, or or. Uh, create more interest for it and, and, and attract uh, others. Think of it like uh, being a, a magnet, so, so to speak, uh, that nobody sees, nobody understands that uh, they are close to a, a magnet. If, if you have uh, adopted these values and, and you understand Bitcoin, you have a good understanding of the Bitcoin uh, social layer and uh, the economics of Bitcoin and the economics of, of fiat, um, then you are a resource in society, and you shouldn't hide. You should you should be there and uh, and and be that person who attracts uh, other other people, other good people, other people with big hearts, other people with resources, because you you need to sort of. Um, uh, make it possible for, for, for them also to flourish. Uh, that's that's my idea, at least. That you, you 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 if if you can, you should inspire others, and you will see that you will attract some of the best and brightest uh, people uh, around you if if you do that. So please please come out and uh, be open about it. If it's <laughs> if it does doesn't put you in a life threatening situation, that's at least my message. One hundred percent, and. Um... One more question on that topic. Do you think it's important that Satoshi Nakamoto is not known or would or differently ask, would Bitcoin as successful as it is now when Satoshi Nakamoto is just a random guy like maybe Adam Beck or maybe even Michael Saylor or something like that? <laughs> Well, I haven't uh, given too much thought uh, to that question, but I know that uh, some people argue that it, he could become sort of an attack vector, and uh, and uh, if if he if he came out and uh, uh, disclosed his uh, identity, it it might be that uh, people would be very interested in in having his hearing his thoughts about how Bitcoin should develop in the future. And uh, it might be that his ideas uh, for, for how to design Bitcoin uh, from the outset was uh, that those ideas were great. But uh, what if his ideas about how Bitcoin should develop in the future are not so very great? And then uh, perhaps it would be a disadvantage, a disadvantage because um, a lot of people would listen to Bitcoin's creator, you know, and, and give a lot of um, um, emphasis uh, em, em, and think that this is very important to listen to him. He knows best. He's a genius, you know. Perhaps it's better that uh, this is a decentralized process where where we don't have a Bitcoin god who... who, who uh, affects the development uh, too much, so... I think, uh, yeah, but uh, I, I guess uh, uh, that's a very, that's a topic of, uh, of its own. Uh, it, it should, it could probably be, be written books about that topic uh, as well, or made a, a thesis about what would happen if, uh, if um, Satoshi came out uh, and, yeah, and uh, told us uh, his story as, 
I think uh, no, I think it's best that he just disappeared, and it's uh, uh, of course uh, it's a wonderful gift that he has uh, uh, given to us, uh, and um, I think um, the story is just so much more powerful uh, because of his disappearance. Mm. I love it so much, and and I even hear now when I discuss and talk with Bitcoiners or even outside of Bitcoiners like uh, um, 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 altcoiners or as I call them shitcoiners um, they often argue like oh but in the Bitcoin white paper Satoshi says that and that and then they try to interpret his words so that they fit in their mm-hmm. kind of scheme so I think it's really positive <laughs> that he's not known um, and, uh, and that he's kind of, I think he knew that he would be a vulnerability for Bitcoin and he he even like wanted to get rid of his own personality in Bitcoin because he knew he w- was an attack vector and he's a vulnerability. But uh, let's come closer to, to the end routine of the podcast. Um, before we get there, I have one more question uh, to your new book. Uh, you said it's an upcoming book or is it already out? The, the um, How was it called? Something with truth. Uh, I forgot the name. It's called um, the Arrow, Arrow of Truth. Of truth. Yeah. Arrow of Truth. And uh, the subtitle is uh, From Foriseti to Satoshi and Beyond. And... Uh, this book is, of course, about Bitcoin. Um, it's uh, you can say that it's uh, split in two, uh, where the first half uh, describes uh, the problem that Bitcoin tries to solve, and, and the second half uh, explains uh, Bitcoin and how it solves it. And uh, in the subtitle, uh, we mention the Norse god. Uh, for Seti, and he was the god of justice in the Norse uh, mythology, and um, we 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 make quite a lot of use of um, storytelling from uh, Norse mythology, or not Norse mythology, but um, uh, but the Viking Age once more, just like we did in uh, Fraud Coin, but we dive a little bit deeper into what kind of society this was and uh, what it was that made it possible for people to have uh, so much freedom that they had and uh, also to have monetary freedom and how they defended their their freedom and we 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 try to um, communicate uh, some parallels uh, between that those social structures and also and, and compare it with the technical structure of, of Bitcoin um, uh, in, in order to make it easier for people to understand also the technical architecture of, of Bitcoin. And this book, uh, A Row of Truth, is, uh, is filled with um, uh, illustrations uh, created by my partner, graphic designer Mattis Storhaug. So it's going to be a, a basically a piece of art uh, when once we have finished it this book grew and grew and grew so now it's 450 pages long so it's quite a big book and uh, we hope to to be able to to print the first uh, batch uh, of the english edition now perhaps uh, to have it ready uh, to btc prague which is an upcoming event in three weeks from now so so yeah, uh, that's the situation uh, for for that book. We have great expectations uh, uh, for for this book. Uh, many people have been waiting eagerly now for yeah. We have been talking about this book for more than a year. So so this is a very big thing for 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 Mattis and I. Oh, really cool! I look forward to it. Um, I will also be in in Bitcoin Prague. Uh, and and uh, yeah. Look, look forward to, to seeing you in person. <laughs> um, Excellent, thank you. Then let's come to the end routine. Uh, uh, my, my new kind of unif- unofficial end, end routine question before the actual end routine is what are you currently passionate about besides Bitcoin? Like what, what topic uh, or what deep learning are you doing besides the topic of Bitcoin? Okay, you can say that... Um... 
my the period from about 2002 to 2010 i was an avid uh, reader and uh, read a lot of austrian economics and all kinds of literature but uh, after i started writing books uh, i've written four books now uh, then uh, it was sort of investigative uh, reading trying to identify the the literature that uh, had the uh, information that I needed in order to complete the books. So it was a very sort of targeted uh, reading. And uh, I, I would uh, love to, to start reading again uh, more broadly uh, just to develop uh, my understanding of uh, yeah, humankind and sociology and so psychology, etc. But uh, I'm I'm a bit tired of all the reading that I've been doing the last four, three, three years and all the writing. So now at the moment, I try to dedicate more of my time to physical activities. So I just recently picked up uh, uh, doing a lot of uh, training and try to, to, to look at um, things, how to improve my health in terms of nutrition, sleep, uh, everything like that. And uh, yeah, develop those uh, sides uh, of uh, of Rune. Uh, yeah, perhaps. Uh, um, yeah, and learn something about health and uh, things like that. Uh, that's my uh, that's my passion uh, at the at the time. Yeah. And uh, and of course, uh, I must say that uh, it's just a year since I was to my I attended my first Bitcoin conference which actually was in Prague um, uh, a little bit more than 11 months ago since then I've been to uh, quite a lot of uh, meetups Bitcoin meetups and I also attended uh, the conference in in Madeira so I'm, I'm developing a passion for for being together with the Bitcoiners in conferences and also uh, sort of from a pro professional perspective, it's very important to, to develop my uh, skills as a public speaker. Um, so I'm going to give a speech, a, a keynote speech in Prague. I'm very much looking forward to that. And uh, I'm, I'm having a lot of speaking engagements uh, here in, in Norway. And uh, yeah, and uh, th this is uh, becoming more and more of a passion for me trying to connect with people when I'm uh, present uh, together with people physically in um, yeah in events like this that's uh, that's uh, one of my main um, ambitions uh, in, in in the near future actually so not so much reading and uh, and, and writing the, the the upcoming few years I guess but more talking to people uh, attending conferences and, uh, and giving presentations uh, things like that and uh, yeah to do something to be more physical, not so much in the digital domain and, <laughs> and in uh, deep, deeply buried in, inside of thick books. <laughs> That's what my, my present uh, time looks like and uh, what I think uh, my future should look like, the, the, the nearest future at least. This this sounds uh, very healthy. <laughs> sounds very good. <laughs> yeah. uh, sometimes we get carried away in like uh, and producing a lot and consuming a lot, and sometimes it's like really, really, really good to just go out for a walk, go out for a run, go out for training, workout, swimming, whatever you uh, you end up doing. Uh, and yeah, I can only encourage everybody to to come to Bitcoin Prague as, as you are also there uh, with a keynote. I will be there. Uh, I will. I will have. At this point, I think I record three podcasts uh, there in different locations in the in the uh, area. So this will be also really, really cool. Uh, so I, uh, as as Bitcoin Prague, uh, Bitcoin Prague is uh, my reason why I'm so passionate now about Bitcoin. Uh, like it, it leveled my understanding of Bitcoin and the commitment that I took to Bitcoin way up like meeting all those great bitcoiners that's mm. why i was also really um glad when 
uh, um, Matthias uh, asked me if, if they can uh, sponsor the podcast. I was like, yeah, I constantly talk about <laughs> Bitcoin Prague anyway. So if I get money okay, for that, I, I definitely do that. Yeah. So I encourage actually everybody to, to, to get, get tickets, get, uh, get yourself to, to, to Prague if you have the possibility and if you have the financial means to, to visit Prague. Uh, depending on where you are, could be difficult, but uh, it's it's definitely something that is great when you are in the Bitcoin community and you either try to just understand it better, uh, or you want to even make something career rise in in the Bitcoin. It's 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 amazing what what such a conference like just two three days uh, can do. And yeah, if you you want to do something in Bitcoin, you basically have to be in, in the Bitcoin conferences. Uh, or crying online to get connections, but uh, physical connections uh, are not beaten by, <laughs> by the online connections. <laughs> no. mm. Perfect. Then uh, let's come to the end routine. Uh, the end routine is where the previous guest is asking a question for the for the next guest without knowing uh, who the next guest is, and it's an uh, perfectly suiting end routine to 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 the Bitcoin conferences. And um, what would be your favorite theme song walking into a Bitcoin conference? Uh, Walking into a Bitcoin conference, you mean like when giving a keynote or uh, when the Bitcoin conference opens or? Uh, let's say uh, the keynote. I mean, this question is like always comes from the previous guest. So uh, I don't yeah. know if he means it like you that or that. that, but, but uh, um, I, I think it would so be. Which, yeah. which tune? Oh, that was a tough one. I think... Uh, I think Eminem has a great uh, rap song from his uh, um, Eight Mile track. What was that? Never Enough. <laughs> Never Enough. No, it, it's not that one. It's the soundtrack for Eight Mile. Let me just have a, a look. Eight Mile soundtrack. Um, oh, Lose Yourself? Lose Yourself. Yeah. Lose Yourself. Yeah. That's my one of my favorite um, um, rap songs. So yeah, I, I really like that one. I think it sort of um, uh, emphasizes the need to to take uh, good to make good use of the op opportunity that has opened up for you. Now you have to just uh, just do it. Mm. Don't think too much and just do it. Yeah, absolutely. And depending on where we are and with the price in, in, in June, uh, in, in, with the Bitcoin Prague, maybe bump it up would also be a good song. <laughs> <laughs> bump it up. Definitely. Uh, uh, perfect. Yeah. Then, That's important uh, for Bitcoin ad adoption as well. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Um, yeah. Where can people find you if they have like questions to your book, questions from what we discussed in the, put, uh, in the podcast? Where can people reach out to you and ask your questions? So they find me on all kinds of social media. Uh, I'm on uh, X, of course, and Noster. I'm a little bit active on LinkedIn and Facebook as well. Uh, you also, I also have an Insta uh, account, so just connect with me and send me a DM, a DM and I'll try to respond. I th I'm, I, as a rule, I respond to, to everybody who, who asks me questions also in the comments in, uh, in, uh, uh, when I write something in social media. So, um, so I'm, and I'm quite active on X, so just check out my account there. You will find um, a whole lot of stuff uh, on monetary policy and uh, and Bitcoin there as well. So yeah, just um, connect with me there. Um, that yeah. would be great. So and yeah. and for everyone uh, watching and listening, the link to runes x will be in the description i always put like one link of the guests so they can check out uh your stuff so they can just like quickly go there and and, and see everything uh you are doing uh perfect and thank you rune for for being on and for everybody listening and watching i'll be back tomorrow with another episode bye bye